and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here my name is holly and a few videos ago like one or two videos ago i did a book tour of my tbr list and i didn't get to show you guys um the rest of my books and this might just be me but when i look for a good book tour on youtube i want people to go like i want to see all of the books i don't just want to be like oh this is the shelf where i keep all of my horror i want to see like all of the books so that's how i'm gonna do mine if you don't like that type of um book tour you can go ahead and probably just click away now but if you do if you are interested in stuff like that then stick around okay there's a terrible glare in here it's it's real bad it's like literally blinding me like wait oh oh dear I fell my okay so where do we start let me start by getting some of this junk out of my way so these are going to be books that i have already read so let's just start off with the shelf that is closest in front of me um and later at like the end of this i'll put in like a picture or maybe right now i'll put in a picture of um what my whole bookshelf looks like but first off um, we're gonna start with my John Green books. For the most part, if I have more than one book by the same author, I do keep all of those books together. Um, if they're just random books that aren't all by the same author, just, you know, ones I have singles, um, I just put those on top and then all of my series are also together. So these are all of my John Green books that I have read so far. So starting off strong, um, we have Turtles all the way down. These are in no like particular order, like these aren't in order of how much I like them or when I read them or anything. These are just shoved on the shelves. So first off, we have Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Um, a pretty good book. There was a poem written in front of that one. Apparently I put my homework in there. Then we have The Fault in Our Stars. I almost just call this a classic. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's not a classic, but I mean, I feel like everybody's read or at least watched that. Um, and then pretty recently I read this one, um, John Green's Looking for Alaska. This book, I mean, it took some turns. I didn't think it was going to go that direction. And then, you know, John Green just decided, I don't like your feelings. So, you know, if you haven't read it, I definitely recommend. Um, also, right now I'm going to go ahead and mention, if you would like to keep up a little bit better with what books I'm reading or what books I'm interested in reading, you can go ahead and follow me on Goodreads. Um, I will, like, put what it is down below. Um, but you guys should totally go do that, become my friends on Goodreads, so then we can share, like, book recommendations and all that sort of, sorts of things. So, moving on now, who, what author are we on? Claire, is her name Claire? Claire Vanderpool? Claire Vanderpool. Claire, wow, Claire Vanderpool. Um, I do have two of her books. I don't know how many books she wrote, um, but I have Moon Over Manifest. It's a good book. I'm just going to say that all of these are good books. I'm great at this, guys. And then Navigating Early, which is such a good book. Um, it's kind of like, like a, I don't know. Like, you're rooting for this kid the whole time. It's like we're the underdog. Kind of. I don't know. But it's a good book as well. Okay, so next up on the same author shelf, we have one of probably my favorite authors, Anthony DeWare. If I'm butchering any of these people's names, any of these authors' names, I do apologize. Um, he's probably one of my favorite authors. So, first up, we have... Which side do I want to start from? I'll just start from the side. We have All the Light We Cannot See. This was actually my mom's book, and she didn't like it. She doesn't necessarily like the books where it, like, switches perspectives. Um, so she gave it to me to read, and I loved it. Um, and this is really what sparked my interest in Anthony DeWare's books. Then we have The Shell Collector, which I believe, if I remember correctly, it's like a series of stories within the story. Um... That was the next one. And then we have Memory Wall, which is also... It's an interesting concept book, actually. Um, that one. And then probably the most recent Anthony Doerr book that I've read is Four Seasons in Rome, which is actually about um, his life. 
so this is um, written by Anthony Dewar about like events that happened in his life, at least from what I understood. If I'm completely wrong, I'm sorry. But that's what I understood. So then, in between... Okay, so up next we do have um, W. Bruce Cameron, which, as most of you should know, is the one, is the person who wrote um, A Dog's Purpose. I do only have a, a Dog's Purpose. Don't, don't side-eye me. Um, I have not gotten around to reading A Dog's Journey or... Uh, I don't remember the third one. I will, eventually, I promise. But I did read A Dog's Purpose. Absolutely loved it. I also read The Dogs of Christmas by W. Bruce Cameron, which is another good one. And I feel like this one doesn't get talked about, like, nearly enough. But it's also really good. It's a cute little Christmas read. Um, I think it's just a good read all around. So I would definitely check that one out. And then we have probably another one of my favorite authors. Um... But I have less of his books. So we have the first off, The Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak, I think is how you pronounce his name. And I know a, a lot of you, oh, you can literally see it right there, uh, author of The Book Thief. So yes, um, this is um, the person, same author who wrote The Book Thief. Um, this is The Bridge of Clay. It is a hefty book. It took me, this book took me forever to read. Plus, I think I read it, I read it a long, long, long time ago. I did like it, but it was just, wow, it took me a while. And then, of course, you can't read Marcus Zusak without reading The Book Thief. Um, I did read this one first, and that's what, again, got me into um, the rest of his books. Incredible book. I fully believe that this book will become a classic someday. Just, it's, it's amazing. Um, if you have not read it, please go read it. And then possibly my favorite out of the three, but I think The Book Thief will always hold to the highest standard. Um, I do absolutely love this book, though. I Am the Messenger. It's just a really interesting concept and a really good book, and not nearly as thick as the other ones. Um, but it's just a really good Marcus Zusak read. If you like Marcus Zusak, then you will like that book. Okay, so that wraps up the same author shelf so those are all the books that aren't a series but they're all by the same author and i keep all of those together so now we're gonna have to move on to the series books so bear with me we're gonna start right in front of me now some of the series that i read I read when I was a lot younger and therefore I used my sister's copies of them so I didn't ever have my own copy of some of these series. I decided to make it a challenge for myself that I would go and thrift all of these um all of these series even if it took me like a long time even if I only found like one book at a time. This happens to be one of those series. I think this series is officially called the Inheritance series. The Inheritance Inheritance Cycle. It's Aragon. Woohoo! We love our fantasy, right? Yeah. Fantasy books. We love a good fantasy book. We love a good dragon book. Okay. If you guys have any good dragon fantasy um, recommendations, please leave those down in the comments because I loved these books okay so i have thrifted aragon i got it for 99 cents i will tell you guys that much what is stuck in this book excuse you i don't know what that is oopsies i do have aragon and then i do have eldest which i believe is actually book two now here's the one thing that kind of you know kind of don't like and no it's not the size difference i don't really care this is the, like, texture. This is, like, a... I don't know. It's a weird texture. But this is the texture of the books that I read. So I read, like, they were all like this. So it was, like, the blue, the red, the mm, yellow, and the green. All in this texture and, like, this front. This one's not like that. And it's not that big of a deal. But, I mean, like, I would kind of... If I ever find 
this version of this book, I will probably trade it out. But I do have those two. I am missing Brissinger and Inheritance. I am still on the lookout for those two. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, I have junk everywhere. Ooh, you were in my armpit there for a second. I'm terribly sorry. Okay, under all of that, we have the Miss Peregrine's Home. The peculiar chill. What was that? It was a thumbtack. That was, was that's what was attacking my book. The Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. This is the box set. So this is books mm, one, two, three. Books one, two, and three. If you guys have ever read the series, you know that there are six books in the series. So these were the first three. I read those a super long time ago. Then I have book four, which is a map of days. So the first three books are Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Hollow City and Library of Souls. And then after that, the fourth book is A Map of Days. Um, significantly thicker. Still a really good book. And yet the series continued. Oh. And then this is the fifth book. Yeah, I was just not counting correctly. These books are by Ransom Riggs, by the way. I didn't tell you. So the Miss... Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series is by Ransom Riggs. And then The Inheritance Cycle is by Christopher pa 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 Paolini? Paolini. Again, I'm really sorry. I'm terrible at pronunciation. Um, but this is the fifth book in this series. I am missing the sixth book. I have not read the sixth book. Um, I will eventually because I do really like the series. Um, so I will eventually get to the sixth book. When I have time, and so you guys have seen my TBR list, you're all like, Holly, you don't need, you need to read the books that you have before you start trying to read, you know, six other series, but we'll see what happens. Okay, continuing on with our series, I have got so much stuff on this desk. We have the Percy Jackson series, Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, all five books. I have all five books. I actually, if you see any differences in like the where in like the first four books and the fifth book, it's because I had all five books originally. My sister got them for me when I read them. Um, and I lent somebody in like middle school the fifth book and I never got it back in just a few months ago when I was still in college. Um, our little, we have a, two little libraries, like the little free libraries on campus. And somebody put the entire Percy Jackson series in there and when I got there the fifth book was still there so I took the fifth book. Ow, I hurt myself. But I took the fifth book. Obviously you know how you, those work. Um, so I have the entire, what is that? Is that a silly band? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to edit this so so badly. Oh there's a bookmark. Oh isn't that luxurious. Um, so anywho, I have that entire series. Loved it. You guys have seen the fact that I have more Rick Riordan, um, that's who wrote that, more of his books to read. Next up, we have Suzanne Collins' The Hunger Games series. So The Hunger Games, um, Catching Fire, and The Mockingjay. I have all three of these books, as well as, technically I think this is supposed to be book zero, but it came after all of these three books. Um, the the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Such a good book. I lent, like, literally everybody on my dorm floor this book. We all read it. It was fantastic. We loved it. So I have all four of those books. I have read them. And then... Oh my goodness. I forgot how big this series is. Oh. This is the other series that I am thrifting. It's the Harry Potter series. So I have got all of these books from the thrift store. So these are books one, two, and three. And then we have books four, five, and six. I don't have book seven yet. I have yet to find book seven. And if you guys watched my TBR, um, my TBR video, you guys will know that I was complaining about not have about having book five in a hardback, and it was so much bigger than the rest of the books, and I was like, J.K. Rowling, why did you let them do this? I found the fifth book, like, a day after I made that video in the thrift store, in paperback, 
Yay! So now I have book five in paperback, and it won't bug me every time I look at it. So I am still missing um, book seven, though, but that's okay. Okay, now we're going to get into the books that are just kind of random. They're not all by the same author. They're not a series. They're just random books that I have read, and they're on the top of my shelf. So I'm probably going to do a lot of, like, random standing and, like, grabbing, um... So be, be prepared. So let me actually, oh my goodness. Let me go ahead and actually just get some of these down right now. I have also got these in various places. I don't think I need to say that, but I will. Um, I got most, I actually get most of these books from secondhand stores or secondhand sources. Or actually that's where I get most of my books. A few of them are like gifts, like so mostly the series are gifts, actually. All of the two series that I told you I thrifted were gifts. And then most of my other books that I mentioned, except for Looking for Alaska, were also gifts, like Christmas gifts. But starting into the just random books now, we have James Patterson's Honeymoon to start it off. I do actually have all of these books organized by size, so if you see them in sort of like a descending size order, that's why. So we have, first off, James Patterson's Honeymoon, loved it, read it pretty recently. Then we have Marjan Satrapi's uh, Persepolis, um, the story of a childhood. This was actually, I got this off of Chegg, um, as this was a textbook that I needed for one of my classes, and I, I just bought it because it was, it was cheaper, whatever. Um, it was worth it to just not rent it and it was actually pretty good it was a it is a graphic memoir a graphic memoir i will not call it a graphic novel it is a memoir um it it was pretty good actually and i'm glad that i got to keep this for my my personal my, my me personally so then we have presumed puzzled i got this from a library a 25 cent cart on a library loved it it's a mystery that contains puzzles if you're into that sort of thing if you like crosswords and Sudoku, um, who is this by? Parnell Hall writes some really cool books, and there's a bunch of them in this series. Then we have The Language of Flowers, which once I got into, I simply could not put down. This is by Vanessa Diffenbaugh. Yeah. Um, loved it. I love flowers, and now I'm so interested in the actual, like, language of flowers. It's crazy. Up next, we have Autobiography of a Face. This, I also had a copy of this as a textbook. Um, it was from, it was for the same class as Persepolis was. Um, but I just rented it. And then we read it and I was like, wow, I kind of wish I had a copy of that for myself. Because it's a really good story. It is a true story. Um, by Lucy Greeley. Or Greeley. Greeley? Greeley? Um, about her life. And it is just such a good memoir. And I'm not much of like a nonfiction reader, but this was a really good story. Um, I recommend. She talks a lot about like not her struggles, her like life struggles in this. Um, so I was glad when I found this for $1.99 at the Goodwill. Then we have, I like how I say I don't really read nonfiction and then I'm like, nonfiction, nonfiction. We have another nonfiction book, The Lost City of the Monkey God. This is by Douglas, oh goodness, I covered his name, Douglas Preston. And it's um, a story about his travels to, was it the Amazon? They went to Brazil, right? I think that's where they went. I think they went to Brazil. The Honduran Rainforest, yeah, okay. They went to the Hon Honduran Rainforest. Um, and it just tells about their travels, and it was actually pretty interesting just to hear about the different travels and the things that they were looking for and trying to do and trying to, like, keep everybody's history and trying to keep, like, not take away their history, not take the history away from the place where it happened, if that makes sense. Um, up next, we have The God of Small Things, which I believe... This, oh, it says fiction. We're back into the fiction. It was just a really good book. 
um, if I remember correctly, this was kind of a weird book, but I liked it. Um, I had to read this for a class when I was still in high school, and I wanted a copy of it for myself, and I finally found it. I, out of respect, am not going to try to pronounce this. It's going to be backwards for you guys, isn't it? Oh no. Oh, I think it's going to be backwards for you guys. Um, I'll put the name of the author up on the screen because I just, I could try to pronounce it, but I'm sorry. I'm ignorant in that sense. I cannot pronounce things correctly. If you've told me how to pronounce it, I could then pronounce it correctly because I, yeah, you know? Okay. And then we have Dave Eggers, Eggers, Eggers. I can, can't even pronounce that right. The Parade. Super interesting book. Super quick. It was a quick read. This was also from the library. Um, super interesting concept. You think you know where it's going and then you don't. That's all I'm going to say about it. After that, we have Sue Monk Kids. The Secret Life of Bees. I will get down on my knees for this book. Well, this book, the storyline, everything. The movie will make me cry without fail every time I watch it. That one scene. We all know the one I'm talking about. Um, this is the uh, this is the movie cover of it. I don't I don't care. I love it so much. This is one of my favorite movies. Um, I really like the movie. I mean, the book is obviously good, but I just think the way it's portrayed in the movie is also really really good. After that, we have Touching Spirit Bear, which is. A little bit of a younger read, but I also read this for a class. Oh, super long time ago in high school. Um, and I thought it was an interesting story too. And I kind of wanted a copy of it for myself. So when I fam found it at Salvation Army, I picked it up for like 79 cents. And then again, another like had to read it for high school book um, is The Outsiders. But I think we all really enjoyed The Outsiders. At least I remember really liking The Outsiders. So... Obviously, I picked that one up as well. I think I also found this at Salvation Army. And super funny thing is when I opened it up, or wait, no. No, on the bottom of it, it actually came from my high school um, that I would have read it at. And then last up for this ser or this section of books is going to be Lisa Jackson's Paranoid. I have not been telling you again who wrote some of these books. Hold on, back up. Touching Spirit Bear is by Ben McAllenson. McAllenson. I'm going to end up putting up all of the authors on the screen because I, you know, can't pronounce anybody's last name or name. And then The Outsiders is S E Hinton. Hin? Hinton. Yeah. Confidence is key. Anywho. Paranoid by Lisa Jackson. That is the last of this stack. I have to do some switching out of stacks. I now have a massive stack of books next to me. And I'm so glad you guys didn't just have to watch me struggle to get these books down because it was embarrassing. All right. Boy, oh boy. Who let me get so many books? Oh, well. Again, now this time we're going to start off with the smallest book. And work our way up to the biggest one in the stack. So, first off, we have Garth Steen, Stein, Steen, Stein, The Art of Racing the Rain. Dog books, man. Let me tell ya. These authors are just like, let me write a book that's going to pull at people's heartstrings. But wait, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a really good book. Again, I mean, I'm not going to say too much about all of these books because I have so many, but it's a good book. Up next, we have Christopher Paul Curtis's, Christopher Paul Curtis's, uh, The Mighty Miss Malone. It's a good book. I mean, I read this one a super long time ago. I think we had to, wait. Oh. I don't remember how I got this book, but it was really good. That is what I remember from it. Um, you know, about finding a place called Wonderful, you know? 
Up next we have Joanne Joan. Oh wait. Joan Joanne Bauer. Almost home. It's another dog. This one I don't think is quite as sad. I don't necessarily remember a lot from this book. Um, because I read it such a long time ago, but I do have it here. Then we have oh boy, we had this was I this doesn't feel as thick. As I remember it was when I originally read it. Um, but this is... Who wrote these books? There it is. Helen Simonson. Simonson? I am butchering all of these. Yikes. The Summer Before the War. This was such an interesting book. Um, I really like historical fiction. Um, and I think that's what this would fall under. That's probably my favorite. Sort of. Um, I'm itching my ankle. If you guys can see my... I have a bug bite on my ankle, um, and that's what I was just doing. I'm sorry. I'm done now. Um, historical fiction is probably one of my favorites. That's what this falls under. A plus for me. Okay. Oh, boy. There went the glasses. I should have these on. Zach, don't yell at me. This is probably one of my favorite books ever. It's easily a five-star read for me. Brent Runyon's The Burn Journals. Oh my goodness. This is a book. Um, it literally says it on the back. I'll read. Um, the Burn Journals is a truly remarkable book about teenage despair and recovery. And that is exactly um, what this book explains. It shows like what it's like to go through some super hard like mental times. Um, and you know, not want to answer necessarily all of the questions that people always ask. Um, so if, I don't know, that's all I'll say about this book. It was a really, really, really good book. Um, it's really good. Then we have Lisa Wingate's uh, Good Hope Road. This was also a super good book. I got this as a gift. As well. I got this one as a gift. This was such a good book. Uh, also, she's really wearing a really cute dress in the picture. Then we have Renee Watson's This Side of Home. I don't remember. I don't remember much about this book. I just remember it's about two sisters oh identical twin sisters just kidding i remember liking the book that's why i kept it i i keep i from this time when i read these sorts of books like when i read these books or like books that i said i read a really long time ago i kept the ones that i liked and this was one of them so plus for me then we have oh boy <laughs> oh boy delia owens where the Crawdads Sing. Such a good book. And kept you guessing until like the very last page. I actually got my mom to read this one as well. Um, she really liked it as well. I think everybody loved this book. Where the Crawdads Sing. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Okay. And then we have Jessie Q. I'm not going to pronounce this one out of respect either. Um... I shouldn't be pronouncing any of these in reality, but Sutanto? Yeah, that's Sutton, Sutanto. I can pronounce these really American. I probably am. Um, very Pennsylvanian. The Obsession, Boy Meets Girl, Boy Stalks Girl, Girl Gets Revenge. Such a good book. And also had some, had some twists and turns in there. Um, this one's Thriller? Horror? Not horror. Thriller, I guess. Um, it's a good book. What are these? Are we doing home survey? And then we have Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. This was also a book that I read in high school a long time ago. And I really, 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 really loved. So I bought it. Um, actually, when I bought my textbooks, if I bought one more book, I got free shipping. 
So <laughs> I did. Um, and now I have this book. This is a really good book. Then I have Ely. Oh, what is this thing? Ely Wiesel. Wiesel? Would it be pronounced with the V instead of the W? This is German, right? Weisel? Wiesel? I should be able to. You know. It's, it's the book Night. Again. I really can't pronounce these books. This is also just a really good book of the, like, the time period, the telling of the time period. Um, I don't think I have to say much about this book because I think it's just one of the best ones. Okay, you guys. So it has been a few days um, since the I started this video of my book tour. And I do just have one big stack of books left to do now. So I am going to go ahead and just get right into it and show you guys the last of my books. So on the top of the stack that I have is actually one of the books that if you guys watched my um, my TBR book tour, I told you guys I was reading two different books. I did finish both of those books now. So um, we're going to start off with um, J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkien? Tol I am, again, I am going to put all of the names up on the screen. Um, the Hobbit. This is book zero. I'm sorry. This is book zero, technically, of the Lord of the Rings series. Um, so I did finish that book. And then I also finished the other book that I was reading, um, Sarah Blake's Nama. So you guys, this was actually a library book, and I picked it up for 25 cents because the cover looked super cool. So there's that one. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get into the books that I didn't just finish reading. So next up, we have Iris Johansson's Dead Aim. This I got from the Historical Society for 50 cents. This was a super good. I bought a lot of these books in my like thriller action like era. Um, this was a really good book. It was a pretty good book. So then we have some of the books. Some of these books I did read a while ago, but as I mentioned, I did only keep like the books that I liked from my younger reading phase. So this is Ellie, Ellie, Ely, Ellie, Wallens, Wallens, um, Zip. This was just a super cute, fun book. Plus, like, look at that cover. Um, it's just so fun and kind of whimsical. Oh no, my books. My books just fell down. Oh no. Oh, I wrecked it. Oops. After that, we have Find Me Where the Water Ends, a So Close to You novel. I think this was technically supposed to be part of a series, um, and I think this might have been the last book of said series. I have not read the other ones. I do plan on reading the other ones. This one is one of the weird ones. This is a gift, so this was purchased at whatever price um, and given to me as a Christmas present. Then we have another one that I think everybody's had, everybody, excuse me, has read, Wonder, which is now obviously the major motion picture. This is actually, the copy that I have actually has some of the um, book or movie pictures in it. And as you guys can see, I did get this at Bradley's before it went out of business in my mall. Then we have another one of my younger reading ones. We have The Castaways. Again, this is, like, look at that cover. That is just such a cool cover. Oh, I forgot. I keep, oh, no. Wonder is by, name is covered up. R.J. Palacio, Palacio. And then The Castaways is by Ian, I, oh boy. Ian, we're going to go with Ian Lawrence. Again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering any of these, as usual. This one was also sort of a gift from my grandmother. After that, we have Lewis. Lewis? Wow, that was rough. Um, Sacher? Sacher? Sack? Yeah. Um, the Card Turner. This is the author of Holes. So if you know how to pronounce the author of Holes... This is the same person. This is such a good book. It's also a pretty interesting concept. 
um, a little sort of a game of bridge. So if you know anything about that. Then we have, I always get this book's name wrong. We have 10 miles past normal. I always just call it normal because it's the biggest word here, but it's 10 miles past normal. I also got this one at Bradley's or it was a gift um, before they went out of business. This is by Francis. Mm. Where, why is your name not anywhere else? This is by Francis. Oh, O'Rourke, O'Rourke Dowell. Um, this was also a good book. It's also super small, so I read this in like a day. Then another one of my younger reading ones, The Secret of the Twelfth Continent. All of my younger reading ones are also super cool covers. Like, look at that. That's just a really cool cover. Um, obviously it's about the secret of the Twelfth Conti Continent. Um, and this one I also believe was a sort of gift from my grandmother. Then... We have Every Note Played by Lisa Genova. This was such a good book. Um, this is by, this is also the author of Still Alice. This is such a good book. Um, so this touches on a man who had ALS. Um, don't ask me to pronounce the what ALS stands for, but it's about um, piano and ALS, and it was just such a good book. Also, sort of an interesting, not concept, but an interesting, like, how it played out. Next up, we only have a few left, so hold on, we're almost done. Next up, we have Al Alexander McCall Smith's Corduroy Mansions. This was also such a cute little book. Obviously, you can't go wrong. There's a picture of a dog on the cover. This is actually the same type of dogs that we have here. So I think that's probably why I picked it up. Um, oh, best-selling author of no the number one ladies detective agency. This was just such a cute book. Okay, it was just so cute. Then we have one of maybe my favorite books I have ever read. It's definitely on the list. Mark Allen Smith's The Inquisitor. I think there's actually another book out. That is supposed to be like the second book of the Inquisitor. I don't remember what it's called. I have it marked on Goodreads. Um, but this was such a good book and I can't wait to read another another book like this. And then we have Spikes by Michael Griffith. This was an interesting book. Um, I picked it up because of um because of the cover. Obviously, it's a book about golf. Not like about golf, it's not like a history book or anything, but the, pl the main characters are golf players. And then lastly, our last book on the list is Jane Smiley's um, Private Life. This is also the author of A Thousand Acres. Another good like historical fiction book, which I again, I love. Also it has the like the raw edges, which I also think are pretty cool. Um, but yes. So that is the official book tour of June 2023. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope you guys are ready for next week's video. Um, if you could just like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. I will also link my Insta and my reselling platforms down below. If you guys go check those out, as well as my Goodreads, it'll be down there as well. If you guys could go check those out and possibly give me a like, a follow, buy something if you really want to. You don't have to, though. And I will see you in next week's video. Bye!